filming. <laughs> okay, watch out. Get out of here. Come on. All right, we're live. Oh. Yeah, come up. Come we're here. live, being appropriate. Come <laughs> That's yeah. like it. Okay, now you, you just knocked it over. Sit. Sit. All right. <laughs> This, I can't have the, you're a distraction. You can, you can stay and sit or you can oh. be crazy and okay. okay. <laughs> All right, this is good. The dog humanizes us. Yes, it makes us good. All right, welcome to the Love and Thunder podcast. I'm your host, Camille lebrun -Bezner. And I'm Dave Lipson. And today, I don't even know which episode we're at at this point. Doesn't matter. But... Something happened this past week, and it really shed a light on some of the stuff that is happening in the fitness world that I think has always happened. Um, but I think it was just disappointing to us because it was someone that is running his business a certain way that really made us question how we run our business because they get so many clients and really focus on marketing. And, um, and we want to talk about that today. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I mean, like, I think the whole landscape of the fitness industry has changed, especially in the past five years, you know, partly due to technology and social yep. media and new platforms and, and honestly, just like digital marketing uh, combined with like COVID, which for a lot of our friends who own brick and mortar gyms was not a great thing, but for the online training industry, it's like necessity breeds innovation, right? And I think that has not, you know, it's, that certainly for us who were, were already online before COVID happened. I mean, starting in 2015, we started offering online programs. We were pretty well versed in this. You know, we saw just with our businesses, this huge influx and demand for folks who want want training on their cell phone or on their computer, want to do it remotely. Um, yeah, so. we can see that um, the access to information is very, it, it, there's just so much information now. And it's so easy for everyone to say something that sounds good, that might not necessarily be true or could be true, really hard to differentiate what is good from what is bad. Um, so how, how can someone in their home like, like figure that out? <laughs> how do you know like what to, what to try? Yeah. I don't know because even I fall victim to, to marketing schemes. I know, we both like, do. Eh? You know, like I, I, I think I was telling you the other day, like it's kind of become this thing where when we started, um, we already had a lot of athletes that knew us and we had credibility, especially in the CrossFit space. You as an athlete with, with your, you know, in-depth resume, mine more as a coach and educator, and also you as an educator too. So, you know, we had a lot of people who already knew us and trusted us. So when we said like, Hey, we've got this cool program or we've got this new book that's come out. Like it was, it was easy. We didn't have to dance around like and we did dance around, but we didn't have to like make hyperbolic claims or, or um, you know, play the TikTok game just mm -hmm. to try to get clicks or views. We could just be like, hey guys, like this is really fucking awesome. You should give it a shot. And they were like, got it, Dave, no problem. But then, you know, when you kind of tap out that audience or, you, you know, when there's a whole new crop of people in who maybe don't know you, you're, you've got to establish that credibility again. And I do not like playing this stupid fucking game. Yeah of it's it's a zero sum game kind of thing where less for you means more for me. Let me tell you why your training is so stupid. Let me tell you why this diet doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you why blah, blah, blah. And it's just kind of like trying to knock other people down and then citing obscure skewed studies that <laughs> don't even really, like you can make a study indicator point to whatever you want it to. Yes. And there's just a lot of people like blowing smoke up your ass to try to get clicks and to try to get, um, you know, an influx of, of cash and, and money and, mm -hmm. and customers. And I've always hated playing that game because I say, like, it doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter how I look. 
the only thing that matters is the results of my athletes, yeah. right? Because if you want to know, does a program work? Is it better to do intermittent fasting or back end carb loading or keto diet or vegan or to train this way or to train that way? Like you can make an argument and de debate semantics until your face is blue. But at the end of the day, the only thing that matters and frankly, the only thing that our athletes are interested in is what can you do for me? And the best way to showcase that is to be able to objectively or visually show transformations or results mm -hmm. with the widest breadth and depth, meaning breadth meaning you've, you've done it with a lot of people, so it's not just one person, because with a single sample size, it could be somebody who's like just really genetically gifted, or yeah. it could be somebody who is like was a high level athlete and just completely let themselves go, and obviously they've got that you know just in in their genetics. Or it could be somebody who's maybe using drugs and doing other stuff. So like looking at one or a few people is not enough, but when you see it happening with lots and lots of people, that's the breath and the depth meaning. It's not just happening a little bit. It's not like okay, I really can't tell the difference. They're three percent stronger. Like what does that mean? But when it's a night and day, zero to hero, like holy shit, double take. What the fuck did that person do? That is undeniable, and you can't argue with it. You know that's why I said like you know people people will say stuff to me about how they disagree with this, that, and the other thing. And I'll be like, okay, okay. well, you know, tell it to my abs, you know? Um, yeah, I think, uh, I mean, going back at something you said uh, earlier, you just brush over this real quick and you went like, you know, we could talk about like low carb and high protein and vegan and this type. The thing, something to keep in mind also is that th there is a program and a protocol there's multiple program and protocol to get someone to where they want to go, depending on their goal and like their lifestyle. Well, yeah, and that's the thing about playing the zero sum game is stupid because everything works and everything has context. Yes. Right. So it's not like you, you know, the way you train is is no good, and the way I train because every program, no matter how complete it is, contains within its omissions the blueprint for where it's going to fail. Yeah. So a really good practitioner is able to play with a lot of different colors and leverage a lot of different tools and systems to be able to like create you know the right the right kind of um, blueprint or framework mm -hmm. for an athlete to succeed and i think that when you commit yourself to one thing and we talked about this the other day about like subscribing to brands instead Versus of subscribing trend. to principles yeah. right like you don't want to subscribe to a brand you want to subscribe to a principle or an idea because now you're you're not you're not locked in. You have a pliability with it, right? You can use it within within context. Whereas if you subscribe to a brand, it's like a wholehearted, you know, wholesale subscription to it. Where anything you say now that doesn't line up with that means you're completely full full of crap. Yeah, to me that's like one of those red flags that you kind of want to look for um, when you get embedded into the influencer influencer world of the fitness industry is those people that will say this is the only way but i personally relied on like really i've tried so hard to just focus on my athletes and focus on doing a good yep. job with them and when we do get the opportunity for somebody who wants to show us what they've done with their body or write us a really great testimonial like i really value that and i leverage it as best that i can because I think really that's the only thing that matters and that uh, that's your medal as a practitioner. It, your, your education, it's important, but it's not about who has the best resume, you know, how well you can speak, the entertaining videos, like that's not really gonna say it's, it's your ability to produce results. Yes. And so we've leveraged these things like before and after photos quite a bit. And this past week, there's a guy that we know named, is it Goob, what's his handle, Goob? It's Goob underscore um, you and then the, the, the number two. And I have to say, I'm very grateful of the work that he's doing. Well, Goob is like, because exposes people in the fitness industry. And, and like, listen, if you're out there, like you do not want to be on Goob's page. Because okay? <laughs> he, he exposes some nasty shit. And a lot of it is like the first time I remember going on his page, because we run in different I circles. I showed you his right? page. You're like, you got to check this and out. And I was like, damn. We do check, we've done check-ins ourselves with lots of coaches. We do check-ins with our athletes. They check in with us all the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, typically it's like some kind of remark of like, hey, you know, here's my weight. Here's how I'm feeling. Here's a check-in photo. And based on that data, 
you update a, a, you know, a prescription. And we'll tell athletes things like, you know, set up a cell phone six feet away, make sure we can see a head to toe, front side and back. You know, girls wear some booty shorts and a sports bra, and guys just wear some compression shorts so we can see your legs. Especially if they're competing in like bodybuilding, we need to see what the legs are looking like, and especially the midsection. That's kind of a constant for all athletes, no matter what category you're in, is like we need to see what your midsection well, is doing. Well, the body, you wear, you wear your work. So for us, when we work with athletes, we want to see like if what we're doing with them is, is transferring into yeah. what they look like. And especially when it comes to a majority of athletes that are kind of in that recomposition fat loss type of category, like seeing the middle of the body is important. So Goob, the first one I saw with him was like, Coaches demanding Ugh. that their their athletes check in with them naked, and and then making like comments if about you their body. Are... And it's it's like it's creepy sexual harassment stuff. And there's so Wait, much of it out there. But stop for a second because this is so important. Like if if someone is listening to a podcast, and someone asks them this, it's so important to me that they know. That that is not normal. That's not a normal thing. That is yeah. not a normal thing. That is not a... It, first of all, it's not like a doctor, you know? It's, it's, a, it's a trainer. They don't need to see that. If they ask you something like Something's that... Something's wrong with that. Run, that. expose yeah. them, like take the screenshot, make sure you have like some record of those type of thing because that is a huge no. Like at the opposite, we tell our athlete... To not dress in like lingerie or this and that. It, it like it's very specific. We ask them like sport bra, booty short, and like guy like compression short. It's, and we want you to like it's this like is not Doctor uh, Doctor Larry Nassar territory. Like you know? if uh, you if you have a coach that is asking you to to like undress, and I have clients if they're not comfortable. If, no problem at all. I just want a shirt tight enough so I can yeah. see like how your body is changing. Yeah, exa exactly. But keep that in mind if you're out there and you're starting to work with a coach or if those things are being asked of you, run. There are weird dynamics that occur between a coach and an athlete. And I will say, I'm not trying to be sexist here, but it's usually a girl and a guy coach where you tend to see the trouble and you know it's it's usually some girl who's fully bought into a coach you know who trusts them and then the coach takes advantage of that yeah. trust and says like hey you know for me to really see how it's coming in i'm going to need to take a peek at your private parts or you should you need to I need to see what your yeah, breasts look like. Yeah, I need to see like. your glutes yeah, more. I like, need to know, you know, how your breasts are balancing out with your shoulders. <laughs> you know, that so. stuff, like that stuff, makes me it makes me sick a little because you see you see girls that wants to like be so good, you know, and get so much better, and they like build that, you know, there's this trust that gets built with this coach, and then they like take advantage of it by like making them feel like this is going to make them better. I would have so and much more respect for a coach a who, bad, who like, would tell an athlete, I would like to violate the coach-athlete relationship dynamic right now because I'm sexually attracted to you, so I can either coach you or you maybe want to go on a date. <laughs> you know? But like, but like I, you, can't, you can't do it both ways because it's just creepy and it ends up being wrong, <laughs> right? I'm or sorry, you, your you know? statement, you just... Listen, I see what I you're can, saying. It's, like, it's an ultimatum. A, I can coach you or we can go on a date, but I can't do both. No, exactly. <laughs> okay. No, exactly. Yes. Like it has to stay professional. It's got to stay professional. So that was the first one you saw from him. And then he's got like, he's got a lot, lots of stuff. But anyways, I've never seen um, him really do stuff in kind of like the CrossFit functional fitness space before. And this Well, week, because I think he didn't have someone who was like breaking quote unquote protocol well, we don't want we don't want to charge anybody with crimes or anything but like it, it i think partly because like a lot of the shady stuff does a lot of shady stuff does happen in the bodybuilding side mm -hmm. of things like it's it's it can be weird right especially when you're you're inside of it and in these close i mean just like crossfit has this little bubble like there's all these like bodybuilding bubbles it's also new newer that like now crossfit is starting to to like spill over in the bodybuilding and the bodybuilding is now spilling over to crossfit and we're now seeing more of those like 
like transformation, yes. changing your body, meshing with the performance, well, honestly, and we're both part of that ex world. Exactly. This is so what we're doing. So I think we haven't seen it before because it's new. Yeah, because we're trying to bridge the gap between performance and mm -hmm. aesthetics, or we're trying to mash the bodybuilding world with the CrossFit world and come up with this kind of lifestyle where you know you can still perform great and be able to do stuff at a high athletic level but maybe you're also focusing on not getting hurt and trying to develop yes. aesthetics and, and that's where me and you are and as as we are getting into this world like like you said one of the things that we both like are super into is like partnering with people doing collaboration because we want to learn from everyone and we really think like everyone rise with the tide and you've done like collaboration with like Marcus Feely and then you've talked um, with Ryan Fisher to try to like see how they do things and like just everyone like shared those ideas and like you're trying to see how everyone's working so everyone can get better. Well, yeah, and I think for us, like for Thunderbro at least, like we're not we're not like a CrossFit competition program, and we're really not just a bodybuilding program. We're kind of in between, and um, you know, some of the people in our space that you could say we're unquote competitive with, they're really just people that are do thing, doing things or marketing things in a similar way to us. Yep. Um, I look at their stuff and I really like it because I just mm -hmm. like the idea of evolving CrossFit and functional fitness into this, you know, it, it's it's people that support that idea of performance and aesthetics. It doesn't really matter how you do it. There's a zillion different ways to do it. But like one person that I look at is Marcus Philly. And like, there are lots of things I like about Marcus. I think he's got great hair. I think he speaks really well. <laughs> you know, he's he's an intelligent guy. Yeah. And and I would say like compared to what we do at Thunderbro, like he's he's probably like a little crunchier. Like he's a little bit more kettlebell yoga type of, you know, that type of stuff. And we're a little bit more into the harder core bodybuilding I mean, side of things. I mean, he does have a, 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 bun, a, head, a hair bun and you have a mohawk. Yeah. So and, that's... And I think sometimes it's, it's natural to feel competitive, but I honestly look at them and I'm like, man, what you're doing is awesome. Like, I, one, I want to learn from you. Two, let's, let's share ideas and see if there's ways that we can do things to mutually benefit each other. So I remember in the CrossFit Games in like 2019, like Marcus Philly and I and Ryan Fisher, we met up and I took them to the gym and I put them through like a muscle anarchy chest day. And I was explaining like, here's what we're doing and why we're doing it and how you can use it and just methods and things like that. And we had such a blast. And that turned into Marcus and I doing like a, an online webinar together yeah. where we, you know, talked about hypertrophy for functional fitness and Ryan and I shared ideas a lot too. Like, so he, he trained with us there and then he came out to Colorado and I brought him in with, um, one of my colleagues and trainers, Alan Watkins to go through like a sample leg day. And with these guys, like one thing I've always advocated to them is like, to, because you're, you're already kind of establishing CrossFit like us, right? Like you've already... Ryan was a competitor, uh, you know, in, in CrossFit. Marcus was a games competitor in, in CrossFit. So I think they have a really good knowledge of that where they tend to maybe not have as much knowledge, just like me, was in the bodybuilding side of things. And one thing I take so much pride in is immersing myself in that to really understand it. Or I said, like, if you really want to know how to do this, you got to actually you do compete. it. You got to compete. The same way that just doing a thruster and a burpee doesn't mean you're doing CrossFit. Like going to the gym. Or going to Orange Terry. Yeah. Going yeah. to the gym and lifting weights doesn't mean you're doing bodybuilding. And a lot of our athletes that come to us will say like, oh, I've done bodybuilding before. But I'm like, N no, you haven't, right? Because because real bodybuilding, it's like it's so many things. It's the diet, it's the lifestyle, it's the you know process of building size and symmetry, and the bringing out definition and doing things in a calculated way. And the only way to really get knowledge of that is to do it yourself. And so it's not that everyone has to like compete in a bodybuilding show. Let's go back. Show. Let's go back to Goob. To go okay. Okay. What about Goob? Let's talk about the elephant in the room. All right. Bring it, bring it out. Yes. So, so we've like see those guys just like you doing all this stuff, and then Goob just exposed Ryan Fisher for and his girl. I don't know which one he exposed. Well, but I, here was the story. Okay. There was some photoshopping of the results, There's... and we always talk about like results are king. Yes. So that's like a, a very dangerous game. There's a lot of stuff going on here. So I think what Goob was saying was like originally he, he uh, 
Ryan does an amazing job marketing. Okay. Yeah. Like I, this, I contacted him years ago cause I like saw his sponsored ads and I know he's tight with the, uh, Alex Hermosi, who's, uh, you know, was the founder of gym launch, which is a huge marketing powerhouse for gyms. And I reached out to him and I said, man, like you're doing so incredible with your ads. Like, what are you doing? And you know, naturally he, he's a little secretive about what he was doing. I was like, okay, I respect that. But he, he's been crushing on that. And I think he's got like taglines like, oh, 100,000 transformations and things like that. And as soon as you start saying stuff like that, I think it makes you a target, yeah. right? Because like everyone's like, what do you mean 100,000 transformations? That's a lot of transformation. So, um, you know, this guy Goob, he, he looked at maybe some of these transformations or stuff on the website and he picked up some Photoshopping or, you know, okay, fine. So there, when I, I've taken photos where I put a filter on it, you had a photo shoot with, um, you're on the cover of Box Magazine. Mm -hmm. This was an old CrossFit When I won magazine. the CrossFit Games. The, right after you won the CrossFit Games, like, Fittest Woman on Earth and Beautiful, they still, like, tried to bring your waist they, in. They to... Photoshopped me. Okay. And it was a huge uproar in the community, and they asked me <laughs> to defend them. You didn't want you would do it. And it was like, no way. No, like, you know, why would I defend you? First of all, I'm the fittest woman on earth, and somehow you're going to go out there and say that my body didn't look good enough? Like, yes. that's insanity. So Goob, you know, finds this stuff. He's like, okay, these guys are Photoshopping some of their before and afters, and... Oh, you know, it, it's so hard to know, like, where is that coming from? Is, is that, does that mean that, that Ryan knew about that, that he was doing it, that, you know, his girlfriend knew about it? it you, don't, you don't know anything. All you know is like, yeah, there were some photos that got Photoshopped. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. What is really the story here? I don't think it's Ryan Fisher or the Photoshop photos. I think it's like this whole digital marketing madness that's going on yeah. where, you know, people feel like maybe they have to contrive data or make hyperbolic claims or say these things to try to get clicks and views. I mean, the other week, um, we have people that help us with marketing, right? Because we're trying to stay mm -hmm. competitive. And, and we had one person say like, okay, Dave, here's what you gotta do. You gotta film 15 different hooks, mm -hmm. 15 different hooks of like insulting people in one way or yeah. another. And just to get them to click the, or yeah. watch the video. And I'm like, wouldn't it be enough just to have like a good product yeah. or to be able to produce the results instead of having to play that game? Um, and, and to me it's frustrating and I don't know why, like I just had this epiphany really, like I feel so much pressure to make millions of dollars training people. And I have no idea why. I think it's because I see like guys like Ryan, you know, having all this success and people telling us what we need to do. And it really made me kind of think a little bit like, what do I want? And what I want is, is I just want impact. I would like to be able to yes. have a career and a, and a good life doing what I do. I think I'm really and good really at it. And really help people and, deeply. And really help people. But like, I can't, I don't think I can produce a hundred thousand transformations. Well, like, you know, like, and it's, it's well, not... here's the thing. If we, if we did do a hundred thousand transformation, I would be worried about my quality of work yeah, with because... each one of the clients and like my, the depth of my impact on them. And also, you know, like bringing my standard down in order to make it happen. Well, I think what's happened is like a lot of these online powerhouses have turned into just money-making factories. Yes. And it's just about getting people in and getting them into the system and trying to, you know, there's probably a lot of attrition and just pumping them through and using these marketing tools to do it. We And, and I think, you know, if you were to do it that way, like, you know, originally we were even thinking like, let's build up our businesses to the point where maybe we can like sell them. And now I'm like, you know, I don't think I want to do that. I no. think I just want to have a good career and a community that I'm proud of, putting in lots of work and having a very impressive breadth and depth of impact. But like, I, I can't like, I just don't think that if, if we had 100,000 people that were, we were coaching or working with, I just don't know that we could provide the same value that we're able to provide to our community. Now granted, like we have a few thousand athletes in subscription, but with nutrition and actual coaching services, now we're just talking about like a few hundred. Yeah. And I think that that for us and even our staff, because we have a support staff, and I'm sure Ryan has a support staff too, but you know, you have to be realistic as to like what it actually takes 
to make real impact and work with people. And it, you know, it, it, to me, it just kind of speaks to like a bigger problem out there where this is the world we're living in. You don't need any education. You don't need a college degree or master's in exercise science. You don't need to have any relevant experience. You don't need to even have a product that's good or that works. All you need is to be popular. Well, and they, now you're a fitness influencer and buy my program. The craziest thing to me is the, because I've worked with this company, I'm not gonna name them, because I wanted to, like, just like you said, you're trying to see what's out there. And I work with this marketing company and they, everything they put out on, on my profile, which I've never had anyone put anything on my social media outside me, had to be run through me. And they would put, make claims that were not true. And those were never oh, yeah. published. That's right. But they would be, oh, we'll get so much more click if we wrote like, five tips by a nutritionist and I'm like I'm not a nutritionist like his me winning the CrossFit game having a chemical engineering degree like having worked with thousands and thousands of people not enough that like you have to make fake claims and it, it like really made me see a whole new world of like like how many of them out there like that are like uh, five tips of how to eat healthy by a nutritionist or by this or by that. Like how many of them truly are like that, that, that was insane to me that they were like constant, like not just once, but like five or six times. I was like, do not publish this. This is a huge no. I am not that this is crossing a line. Like this is like me. I build this I build everything from scratch in my life and like going out and claiming something like this could like ruin everything because you yeah. lose the trust. But it was so, to them, it was so normal. And I'm like, wow, that tells me that every other client you work with, you're doing that. Well, I think, um, I think it's important for people, no matter who you are or what you do, to kind of live by a code or yeah. have, uh, you know, to, to have um, a, a mission of, you know, your character and who you want to be. And it's very hard to stay true to that mission because temptation is all around you. Mm -hmm. If somebody said, Dave, you know, we'll get a million people into your muscle anarchy program, but all you got to do is just like lie to them. I, I would be <laughs> tempted to do that. I, I don't think I would. I don't think we I would. I would be tempted but because yes, the temptation is like right there. And it's a lot of like sacrificing what you want right now for what you want like long term. But I totally understand how people can fall into that because it just sucks you in. And like, you know, Ryan, I want to defend him a little bit here because I know him. He's a, he's a good dude. He is very competitive. We used to compete together at the SoCal Regional. Okay? But that's the temptation, and, right? When you're yeah. very, very competitive, it's, this is like the same thing as when you're competitive in a sport where you, you shouldn't take drugs. Yep. And it's like, okay, at what point does the, the problem in real life is that no one comes after you necessarily for lying. Like there's well, a couple of layers before you get to that. Well, some so, people want to push until they get caught. Or, exactly. Or with thing and like, so I think it's, the, it's kind of like that, that same thing. Yep. Like I think some competitor are willing to take that step. And, and maybe that's and, maybe that's part of their mission and of if like it do works, whatever it takes to win. And right? if it works and they're successful and never get caught, then that's it. Yeah, I mean that's almost like Lance Armstrong. <laughs> I mean it comes back to just like moral and value and like, do you want a, a, a business that works at all costs, or like are you more into like you know your. Um, how do you say it? Like your process and your journey and like... But I, I think with Ryan, I was going to say is that like yeah. he, he is a very like competitive person and I think he's very driven too. Yep, um, for sure. You know, we competed for years at the SoCal Regional and there was, the, um, there was an event in like 2013, like the last day where, you know, sometimes when you're competitive, your emotions get the best of you. And there was an incidence where it kind of got the best of him yeah. and they made a big scene about it. And I think like... You know, from one side, you could be like, okay, well, this athlete lost their cool. But from the other side, you're like, no, look how bad they want it. You know, like they're, they're so desperate, you know, to, to achieve. And I think that's where, 
it, that's that area that can sometimes kind of suck you in and, and, you know, I don't know that Ryan at all knew that these photos were being photoshopped. Maybe did, maybe didn't. I honestly don't care. <laughs> I'm sure yeah, so. I'm sure that like he's got lots of good success stories even without I'm those. I'm sure he's helping those like so things. many people. Yep. It's the bigger conversation around it that's important. Yes. It's the you know, maybe he did work with a marketing company and they like they decided to photoshop it exactly. for him, like, you, you don't know? Even know who that who it's was. the bigger is the bigger picture of like be very careful who you work with because people are going to are going to do what they need to do sometimes to just get whatever I see to too. tell you that they are successful cuz they brought you new people in your business and things like that but meanwhile they were ruining your business by by photoshopping people I said to you the other day you know cuz you you say nice things to me, right? You're my wife, and and you see what I do, and you see that I always show you our athletes and how proud I am of them, and you know you you were saying something the lines like Dave, you know you're you're so good at what you do and this and that, and I go honestly every day I wake up and I really hope <laughs> that I'm just not full of shit. Yeah, you know, I feel like, the same way. I, you know, because I I am honestly, and I think I think that's probably what makes me good is the fact that I'm like I'm scared of that. Like I really want to make sure that what I'm doing is doing what it says and that I'm yeah. providing a value to people where every athlete we're able to touch, there's like an imprint and we've impacted them in a way that's going to like really, you know, give them, give them an experience that they can't get anywhere else. Um, yeah. and, and you know, it's, it's so easy cause like it's hard to market that and it's hard to market that without being like hyperbolic or especially now with the amount of competition in the space that, um, I think you kind of have to, Maybe play the game of, of like, you know, maybe the growth isn't going to be rapid. You know, maybe it's just going to be like one client at a time and yeah. it's not going to be a hundred thousand transformations and that's fine. And it's going to, it's not going to happen overnight. Listen, when I started in the training industry, you were really, really lucky to make a hundred thousand dollars as a trainer. Like it was not a good career path. Anybody that goes into the training industry to make money, that's a stupid yeah, idea. Yeah, they ended up working not a at, good a, way to make money. at a club fitness. Exactly. Or, yeah. you, you'll be working on the hour or you, maybe you'd be a strength and conditioning coach and this and that. And maybe if you owned a company, you know, you could build a gym or a business or something. But it was like, it's not an easy path. And now it's kind of like open seas, like a gold rush kind of feel where everyone's like, we're going to be the next Peloton. We're going to be the Netflix yeah. of fitness. And, and I'm like, we should just slow down because... Just be the best you. Most of the people I started in the training industry with are no longer working in the training industry. Mm -hmm. They're real estate people or selling pharmaceuticals. You know, yeah. because they realize like, oh, this isn't really a career. I, for lack of better or worse... This is all that I can do. <laughs> okay. this, is, so, this is our so talent. I have to be. I this have is to our be talent. Really, I have to be really, really fucking good at this because I cannot work for anyone else. Okay, I will not be told what to do. I constantly question everything, and I'm, you know, and and I'm the type of person who, like, just the feeling I get by creating something and having it being mine is is it makes me feel fulfilled and, and joyous in a way that I just can't recreate. I know. mean, being married to you for all those years, everyone has a talent. This is your talent. Yeah, exactly. And you it, it better are be. And I better be good so... at it. And you got to keep it sharp and you got to keep pushing. And, and instead of investing in the next marketing thing, like I want to focus on like, what can I bring to people that's going to like change the game for them? Like, what's the next book I'm going to write? What's the next program I'm going to launch? How do I make their experience better? Like, you know, all the coaching calls, like that's what I want to be focused on. I don't want to be focused on the noise and the bullshit, mm -hmm. but you also have to be yeah. you know, to survive. All right. Let's, let's wrap this up. Okay. I don't know what the moral you, story is. If you want to be a, a new trainer, a new coach, keep things tight. Be careful of the, the shiny star out there. Be careful of what people tell you they can do for you. And uh, just work hard and keep doing things right. Yeah, and I would say, like, even with Goob, right? Like, he's marketing himself with these videos, too. A hundred percent. That's what you... So yes, you need to keep that in mind, you too. You know, th there are people out there that benefit from trying to bring other people down. Yes. 
and it's it's not always pretty it's not always true um and so you know kind of approach this stuff with like take it with a grain of salt and if you want to know about ryan and these before and afters i would recommend go check out chalk training and see see what his some of his stuff is about mm -hmm. you know like i i, I think that I mean, at That's, the end of the day, try try the stuff for yourself, and you'll see if it works or not. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And and if you're versed in in training, you usually immediately know you can recognize you know who has good legitimate training practices and who's just it's it's just not a lot of substance. Yeah. You know, and and so the only way to to know is to actually try it. That's the difference between knowledge and information. It's like you got to actually, you know, walk walk the walk, so yes. to speak. Okay. All right. All right. Thank Thanks everyone in. for watching. Let us know what you want us to talk about next or at oh, any point. Just gossip. Okay. Nailed it. <laughs>